All right, you guys, I figured I'd go ahead and give an update on this story because we've been talking about it on this channel, especially because I saw this tweet coming from Culture Crave. It says, Warner Brothers uh, Discovery, you already know, only has enough money to release two movies the rest of this year, Black Adam, which of course we had been hearing about, and Don't Worry Darling, I guess that's the movie with Harry Styles or something. I saw him acting next to, or trying to act next to Florence, and I was just like, <laughs> Anyway, 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 let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I had to read some articles and just figure out what the hell's going on. Why y'all lost why y'all lost $20 billion? <laughs> okay, y'all, I'm gonna skim through um some three articles real quick so we can just get a handle on what's actually happening. And we could talk about it because I don't know what, the, like, what are they doing? So this first one says Warner Brothers Discovery delays Aquaman and Shazam sequels over cost concerns. And of course, that's part of the reason why uh, Jason Momoa's fine ass is in my thumbnail. The company's, <laughs> the company's trying to save money on marketing and distributing big pictures let's read some of it it says here the team at warner brothers discovery has doubled down on a scorched earth strategy to cut costs in recent months and it's even impacting some of their upcoming tentpole film releases according to the hollywood reporter the company is so low on coin it's so broke it has nothing in the piggy bank it's i'm talking about pennies um that it's pushed back the release dates of two movies, Aquaman and the Last Kingdom and Shazam Fury of the Gods, in order to spread out costs associated with marketing and distributing. They give you the time frame uh, where Aquaman was originally supposed to drop March 17th, and they're saying it 2023, and they're saying that it's going to be released now in December 20 on December 25th, 2023. And Fury of the Gods has a uh, March release date instead of being released in December 2022. So that annoyed the shit out of me. Like I said, I know that I'm not gonna, I don't want to ever get on here pretending like I'm some DC stand like that, especially when y'all see me <laughs> going up for Marvel all the time. But still, like I was very, I was looking forward to seeing Aquaman, you know, the, the, the sequel, like what's going on? I don't want to see what's going on. But yeah, um, they said, girl, tough, <laughs> tough cookie. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, but that shit is not coming. <laughs> this shit is not coming out. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. It says here, uh, news of Warner Brothers calendar shifting comes after reports that the company lost twenty billion dollars. <laughs> Jesus, twenty billion dollars in market cap. I'm sure there's gonna be somebody who you know knows economics and all that shit. Economics major or whatever the fuck talking about. Oh girl, well. They didn't actually lose twenty billion dollars. It's the twenty. It's the it's the value. It's the market cap. It's the, I'm just like girl. Twenty billion dollars is out of date possession, girl, or whatever. It's out of, it's out of date valuation, girl. Like that's crazy. Especially when you see here, CEO David Zaslav's main strategy in finding that three. Well, he was trying to save three billion dollars overall, and ended up <laughs> losing twenty billion dollars in the fucking. Value and the market cap, like, girl, what's going on? Y'all already know what happened with the Batgirl stuff. So let's wait. Let me see here. Um. So yeah, additionally, over 200 classic episodes of Sesame Street have disappeared. Um. Uh, from HBO, y'all already know what happened. Oh, oh, Batman series will not make it to the streamer at all. And so they're trying to apparently make up for its massive loss of content by offering a 30% discount on annual subscriptions. Like, girl, I'm. <laughs> I don't want to see the percentage of people who have annual prescriptions. Because, <laughs> girl, who's selling that shit? Anyway, anyway. Now, let's talk about some of the reasons. <laughs> or just Let's talk about why this even happened in the first place. Warner Brothers Discovery lost $20 billion in market cap trying to cut $3 billion in costs. The more WBD cuts, the more the stock price goes down. So since completing its uh, April 8th merger, Warner Brothers Discovery has been on a cost-cutting frenzy with an announced goal of finding $3 billion in savings. That did not go as planned. <laughs> that did not go as planned. The process began when they asked CNN Plus on April 21st, and since then they've shelled Batgirl, removed over 200 classic episodes of Sesame Street, blah, 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 and iced dozens of upcoming projects with a result uh, that Warner Brothers has lost a total of $20 billion in market cap and counting. 
Um, so uh, in this article, they're saying, because I don't want to read everything and, and pretend like I'm some fucking, like I said, I'm not pretending like I'm an economics major or, or some shit, or I graduated with economics degree. Like, girl, I don't know what the fuck they be talking about half the time. But what I do see is that, what I do see here is that Warner Brothers $55 billion in debt. And they were pressed about that shit when the merger even began, first began. And as you can see here, it also says that today, August 22nd, the same company is estimated to be worth $31 billion if the market's estimate is accurate. And that's a big if. Warner Brothers Discovery is worth about $20 billion less than when they started cutting costs. Much of the blame will be laid at the feet of CEO David Zaslab, who was paid $246 million ahead of the merger? <laughs> Jeez, can you imagine getting a close to 250 million dollars before you even fucking do anything, bitch? <laughs> God damn, I want that kind of sign on bonus wherever I go. What the hell? Two, almost 250 million dollars before this motherfucker ain't even doing anything, bitch. So yeah, I'll summarize real quick before we go, move on to the um the last article from the Daily Beast. Girl, they losing coin. And not only that, they giving discounts on annual on annual subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy to be annual subscription. Bitch, if you're a hoe, don't cut that monthly subscription. Anyway, 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 anyway. So they're losing that. I mean, they're taking off content off their site, off the, their apps and stuff. Um, I saw that they were giving like, I don't know, some secret ass screening of Batgirl. And after that, they're going to delete that shit forever. It's just, it's just really, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand. If someone can explain this shit to me, please go ahead. Now this part is the I find the most interesting. Laid off HBO Max executives reveal that Warner Brothers Discovery is killing off diversity and courting quote unquote middle America. It says here Warner Brothers Discovery has asked about 13 non-white executives as it tries to climb out of debt. It will likely affect the shows and movies that are made. Likely. It will definitely affect the shows and the movies that are made. So I'll read this and then we can talk about it as we go along and end it. Uh, in the video. For, so former HBO Max executives say the streaming service has been left with few people of cover, color to oversee its diverse slate of programming as Warner Brothers Discovery continues its ongoing corporate shuffling. The platform reportedly laid off close to 70 people this month. That includes in th the entire teams overseeing unscripted kids and family um, and international content, according to two former HBO Max executives who asked not to be named. Now, one former employee says as many as 13 people of color previously in charge of developing shows like the Gordita uh, Chronicles and the Spanish language docu-series Menudo Forever Young have been let go, likely influencing types of shows, the types of shows and movies that are greenlit moving forward. Among those laid off are Jen Kim, an Asian woman who served as a senior vice president of the international team, damn. And I guess Kayla Barnes, a black woman who worked under Kim. I don't think anyone knows just how white the staff is, one former executive told the Daily Beast. Former HBO Max staffers say there are barely any non-white people left in the upper ranks of content, with one naming Joey Chavez, an executive vice, vice president of drama, as one of the few people of color still there. Because HBO Max and the original HBO channel operate somewhat independently, one former executive conceded that there may be one black woman on the HBO side, maybe. So the layoffs have amplified um, the lack of diversity at HBO. Another former executive told the Daily Beast, they said, instead of, you know, trying to figure out how to integrate some of the max executives into HBO, they just made this sweeping cut of three divisions, kids, family, and international. A lot of black and brown people lost their jobs. Discovery CEO was charged with helping Warner crawl out of a $50 billion hole. He came in like a wrecking ball, no Miley Cyrus, tearing up CNN's $300 million streaming service, CNN Plus, and vowing to pull the Warner-owned news channel away from quote-unquote advocacy journalism. Mm. I think this is one of the big takeaways from the article. Former Warner employees believe that these changes are just as much about business as they are about reshaping the ideological perception of Warner properties. It all points to the same end, they say. A rejection of left-wing or highly diverse content in favor of more homogeneous middle America friendly fare. The lack of diversity in content staff might just make that goal 
easier. In a statement to the Daily Beast, HBO highlighted shows like Euphoria, Rap Shit, a black lady sh uh, sketch show, um, all that shit, all of which are led by diverse characters. So I guess HBO basically said, hey girl, we got black friends too. <laughs> They might not be decision makers at the top of, they might not be making any kind of decisions at HBO at the top of these fucking business meetings in these big ass offices that we have, bitch. But we got black friends too and they're on screen so y'all need to shut the hell up. HBO and HBO Max have always shown a commitment to diverse programming and storytellers and always will. And it's just like, <sighs> so of course they had this internal graphic that was passed around comparing Discovery Plus and HBO Max, right? Like the people who use apparently the research that they did, I guess, the people who use Discovery Plus and HBO Max. So here they say that HBO Max is popular with diverse groups, single people, and drivers of hybrid cars. Discovery is popular with white married people who drive SUVs and minivans. And, and traveling buses is given very much Karen, soccer mom type of tease. HBO Max viewers are on TikTok and Instagram while Discovery Plus viewers are on used uh, social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Facebook and Twitter, if they even have any. HBO Max viewers have no kids. Woo, woo, woo! <laughs> Sorry. Um, and Discovery... They Discovery Plus viewers either are empty nesters or they grand they have grandkids. It's just like and and at this point, Discovery may be trying to pull HBO into its orbit as it focuses on what it does best. You can see how one former executive here described Discovery Plus as a more general audience platform that doesn't have the specificity that HBO Max was tailored to. I think Discovery is just a very quote unquote all audience. They don't want to make things that are political, topical, alienate quote unquote middle America. <laughs> Uh, more Chip and Joanna. They said, referring to the home renovation show, Fixer Upper, Welcome Home, blah, 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 blah. Here, it also says that our sources agree that the removals are like of the like titles that have been disappearing from HBO Max's platform. The removals of those titles are mostly related to money. The company can claim a tax break for the costs associated with certain shows as long as it promises to stop profiting off them, which means taking them down altogether. One former staffer said this, they're canceling a lens of perspective that I don't think exists when you look at Discovery branded shows. Speaking of the company's plan to combine HBO Max and Discovery Plus into one giant streaming service in the near future, the laid off executive said, don't be surprised if there is a new name for the platform. So reading all of that, it's just so much. A lot of, a lot of things have been confirmed to me. A lot of, you know, because we all looked at this deal. We all looked at this stuff like this shit don't make no sense. And just seeing this report, seeing what's been going on and seeing the inner workings of what is happening at the country, co country, company, <laughs> and seeing what the previous or the laid off executives have been saying. It's just like this shit don't look like it's, it's making no kind of sense. Like the shit that I was talking about before uh, in the previous video where I covered this shit, this shit is the, like what my concerns or my questions, cause child, I mean, HBO ain't pay me, so ain't concerns, but you know, my questions, I feel like they were warranted. The shit that I was asking, the shit that everybody else asking about this shit, just the fact that y'all did research on both Discovery, Discovery and HBO Max and the people who use them shits, and you think that you can take these grandparents who are watching these fucking home, <laughs> these home renovations and these motherfucking, I mean, what you will not replace us conservatives watching y'all fucking shit and then y'all go over here talking about oh well hbo people who watch hbo max they single they love diversity blah 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 they, they are diverse <laughs> you know some of them might be minorities even though y'all seem to have that shit makes y'all uncomfortable so y'all think y'all can take those two different demographics and join them up and create a new fucking app <laughs> and create a new fucking app. You think you're gonna take those wildly, wildly different kinds of demographic, different types of audiences, and join them up and convince both of their asses to 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 sign up to a a new app? How does this make any sense at all? Like I don't get, <laughs> I don't understand this shit. I don't understand it. So yeah, I just I really thought that this last article was very important to read and to talk about because it puts into perspective the reasons why they or the, the their motivations behind doing certain things and what they think is is possible right i cannot imagine getting this this new ceo got paid 250 million dollars before he even did anything bitch of course he ripping shit up 
<laughs> of course he ripping shit up. Child, if y'all pay, can you imagine getting paid 250 million dollars for you even step foot in the office, bitch? Imagine if he just threw, if he just, you know, threw everything off the tables and the, the desk, flipped the desk over, fucked up the whole office, and then left with his 250 million dollars. <laughs> Get out my face. Get it get out get out my face. Get out my face. Because honestly, honestly, if y'all know that the alt-right is using Discovery Plus. <laughs> if you know ultra conservatives are on Discovery Plus and you got these 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 queers twirling on HBO names, like girl, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how y'all think that joining up those two apps or those two demographics is going to be an easy, seamless kind of business decision to make. You see what I'm saying? He came in there expecting to save $3 billion and, and let go of $20, million, $20 billion in market value, girl. <laughs> Listen, if some of my favorite properties, TV shows, you know what I mean, movies, whatever, are unavailable, are snatched up, are fucked over because of this man, I'm gonna be so mad. I'm gonna be so, <laughs> I'm gonna be so mad. So let me, tell me what y'all think. Let me know what y'all think. Because this is just, it seems like the more we learn about this deal, this merger, the more we see how much bullshit is really going on for real, you know? And this is important not only because I love TV and I love movies and I love all this shit. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's important because the people who, for example, the people who worked on Batgirl, they're never gonna, if, if Warner Brothers deletes that shit forever like they say they're gonna do, all that work for years, how, and it's not just bad people worked on Batgirl, but all that work that creators had done, it's gonna be gone forever. Take that shit off streaming, gone forever. It's like, yeah, okay, we can, it, like, we understand that there are illegal sites out there pirating, but it's like, why would, why should you have to do that? Why should creatives have to do that shit to, to hold on to the work that they did? That's people's life's work. It's how many countless hours of work. It's people's passion, it's people's, you know, creativity. A lot, a lot, most people on this planet if you work somewhere, you were just at the mercy of some big company, some company, right? So to preserve the creativity, to preserve the passion, to preserve the, the power of artists and performers, it's like, it's the, so when money and big studios get involved in art and creativity, it always is fucking annoying. It's always crazy and annoying. So yeah, I think that's why it's important to have these kinds of conversations. Anyway, let me know what y'all think about it and I will catch y'all later.